Good to have you back in the Lord's house tonight. I look around tonight and had some promise that he's going to come back tonight, but they're not here. I'm disappointed again. Then there's some that I look around, I wish they were here, but they're not. And I look around, I see some that are here, and I'm glad. So I'm so glad you're here tonight to be with us. Glad to have, I think, folk that we say visit, but they just coming in and been here before, so we don't count you visitors. So thank you for coming, being a part of our service tonight. So you pray the Lord's will be done. Continue to pray for the prayer request. Pray for Miss B. Trailer. She will be having her heart cast sometimes tomorrow. They don't know what time. So if they don't know what time, I don't know what time. So just pray for her and pray everything will go well and pray that she'll uh, do all right. If they do a heart cath, let's just pray that it'll turn out and uh, nothing, be, nothing be serious or wrong. Um, pray also for the others that we mentioned this morning. Uh, they slipped my mind right off. And Jane Brown, yes, she's at, back in the hospital. So keep her in your prayers. Also pray for uh, Rick Rack and uh, Sandy Bahila. She's doing all right right now, but she did spend some time in the hospital just a week or so back. So pray for, pray for her and pray for Rick and them. They have a pretty rough time there at the house, him taking care of both of them. So you pray the Lord give Rick strength. Let's stand if you would, please. We'll go to the Lord in word of prayer. Uh, Lisa. Okay. All right. Pray for, pray for Melissa. All right. A lot of prayer requests, and I know I'm sure that we all need prayer. Brother Dennis Bishop, would you pray for us, please, brother? Amen. Remain standing, please. Turn your hymn books. Page number 331. Page 331. We'll sing the first and last verse. Stand up for Jesus. sing for us at this time. Pray for her while she's coming.
Amen. I'm glad he loves me tonight. I'm glad I don't ever have to worry about him falling out of love with me. I'm glad he'll love me forever, for all eternity. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to have Brother Mike Boone with us tonight. He's going to come and sing a couple for us. Uh, we like him to sing whenever we can, so we're going to have him sing a couple here tonight. It just don't make any sense that all the good singing you got here, they asked me to sing. I mean, there's singers on every road, just about, that can sing, except you. But uh, I'm thankful that they asked. Uh, I wish they'd let me sing songs that I want to sing, but it's okay. It's okay. Uh, if you listen to the introduction of this song, I sang this at a church that I'd never been before, and the pastor didn't know me, and I really didn't know him. But if you listen to the introduction, it, it, don't, don't go carnal on me. Because he started to stop me as I started to sing this song, but it sounds just like, please release me, let me go. it happened I tried to tell them thanks to Calvary we don't go there anymore thanks to Calvary I am not that man that I are new. We just don't travel those same roads we used to. I'm so glad. Perfect? No. Far from it. Serve a perfect God though. I'm so glad he hears me. Do you know that the angels even know me by name? That tickles me to death. My next door neighbor sometimes 
don't know who I am or the folks that I along the road, but God knows me, and, and I'm so glad of that. And we got a new person running the board. I think you're doing a good job. They ought to double your salary. <laughs> Push that other button there, sis. <laughs> He's in the house. If not inside this building, he's inside me. The little girl was lying there. The people all were weeping. They just laughed at Jesus when he said she's only sleeping. But as he took her by the hand, she began to leave again. Some began to praise the Lord. Some began to say He's in the house It has to flee Now there is light where darkness used to be Now there heart of mine and he gave me life again I am just a house of clay and ever since that happy day there's a light that shines in me for all the world to see Mike blesses my soul every time he comes. I tell you right now, it just feels like he, I feel like letting him have a concert tonight. Amen. Amen. Let him sing something that he wants to sing. But he was talking that song that sounded like, please release me, let me go. I told Brother Jamie, if I had a hold of him, I'd let him go. He wouldn't have to worry about that. <laughs> Amen. Isn't it good just come to the Lord's house and be blessed? And I'm glad the Lord's in the blessing business. Goes along with what we talking about this morning. We ought to just shout it out. Because of the goodness of the good Lord. What a blessing he's been to us. Well, it's a thrill and a joy to be here tonight. Thank Brother Mike for coming. If he'd come by more often, maybe we wouldn't let him sing as often. <laughs> we don't get by very often, so we like to use him when he comes by. Of course, he goes to church somewhere else. He attends church uh, somewhere else, and he's not able to be here, and that's the reason. But we sure to enjoy him coming by. But I like for him to sing spiritual songs. That last, uh, that song he sang about uh, thanks to Calvary. The little boy rent and hid behind the door. He ain't got no little boy. <laughs> and boy, they've never been little. <laughs> but anyway, I appreciate that so much. I'm glad, glad I'm saved tonight. Let's have the ushers to come forward. We're going to receive our offering. And uh, you give tonight is given unto the Lord. Don't forget, 
we start to mark the fair. Don't forget, in the morning, <clears throat> if there's any ladies that are available can come out, we need for you to come, if you would, please. We need to make 150 hot dogs in the morning. So uh, if you can come, what time y'all going to come? No, that's when we made them last year. Yeah. Just get them early and get them while we can. So y'all come. We'll find out what time later. Let you know between now and Christmas. But anyway, come if you can in the morning. I'm going to say 9 o'clock. Nobody else is going to set a time. I'll set a time 9 o'clock. Okay? And uh, so we can get them done, get them ready, and get them prepared and have them ready to go. Taking them to the fair to give away, along with them 841 homemade fried apple pies our ladies made yesterday. Well, we ain't going to take them all at one time now, but we're going to take them out during the week. And I appreciate those ladies that done that and the men that worked yesterday once again. Tremendous blessing to see the Lord work in people's lives and use them. So let's ask the Lord's blessing tonight be upon the offering. Pray God would bless it and use it for his honor and for his glory. Brother Bill, if you'd pray for us, please. Bill Noblet. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Granted, our Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bill.
like that song. There's no secret what God can do. Don't forget, ladies, if anybody would like to go up to the uh, Dependent Baptist Church, that's in Inman, for the ladies' meeting on Saturday from 9.30 to 12. Uh, see Linda. They need to know how many is coming. <laughs> how many is coming and they know what to prepare for. So if you'd like to go, uh, be sure to let her know. And uh, Brother Mike's not through singing yet. He didn't sing what I asked him to yet. I want him to come back and sing for us. I want him to sing, uh, it was me. And that song, uh, they, they can't take Jesus out of my heart. And then after that, <laughs> I'm going to let him sing what he wants to sing with the exception of the cowboy song. <laughs> Amen, Brian. <laughs> I understand. Come on, Brother Mike. You've got to be yourself. You do. You, you just, you're just you not yourself if you don't be like yourself. And the fella in the recording studio says, you've lost your mind. You ain't going to put that on her. I said, put that on her. I said, it ain't going to hurt a thing. Uh, I was checking to see how Brian, y'all call him Brian. We call him Bubba. I checked to see how Bubba felt. Like he's got a, had a sinus problem this morning. I was going to try to get the boys to sing, but I don't want no crackling and popping and you know, no snot bubbles up here, so. <laughs> Pick whatever you play, brother. Their heads were low And their steps were slow As they walked along that long Emmaus road when a man appeared And as he grew near He said, why are you so sad? Are things really that bad? They said, sir Have you not heard? You must Stranger in this town For the one who came In the Father's name You see, he has been cut down They've laid his body in the ground But as they walked and talked The man began to explain about this Jesus and why he came he opened the scriptures and began to teach the preacher of all preachers began to preach in the wilderness the children had nothing there to eat but manna from heaven fell down at their feet when they were dry and thirsty in a foreign land Living waters came forth out of a rock in the sand When the three Hebrew children were thrown in the flame That fourth man appeared, they even called him by name The man of the water, the man, they're all the same If you're still confused, let me make this real plain It was me It was me It was me I'm the one that you left back there at Calvary. It was me. Who do you think of the stars in the sky? Who do you think made the day and the night? Who made the flowers? Who made the trees? Who made the sun and the moon and the sea? And who gives life to all who believe? Who do you think made the blind see? Who made the very air that you breathe? And who defeated death and won victory? It was me. It was me. I'm the one who died for you at Calvary. It was me who loved. 
loved you when no one else would who saved you when no one else could thank you Lord it was me Seems like this world is getting worse and worse. But you know the results. They can take the Ten Commandments off the courthouse walls. They can even take every manger scene out of every park. And mom, they may take my precious Bible, tear the pages all apart, but they'll never, never take Jesus out of. Take away the life he gave. They can't send my soul to hell. They may take my precious Bible, tear the pages all apart, but they'll never. Make it be against the law when we witness door to door. They may stop my voice from speaking in the streets and even in the park. Oh, but they'll never, never take.
let you pick. I just, it just. <laughs> All right. Wait, let me let me share this. I don't have to share this, but I want to share this. Uh, my wife gets my clothes from Hayban. Now, all that means is that's big clothes for short people. <laughs> it's nice getting pants that you don't have to hem that much off for it to fit you. But on Hayban clothes, there's no rubber lining that kind of sticks to your shirt. And if you're in the habit of jumping up and down like I am, so I'm staying behind here tonight. <laughs> All right. Just thought you needed to know that. What happened to the preacher that used to preach so strong? What happened to that singer that used to sing our song? The preacher's out selling Amway, that singer now singing hip hop. They've sold out to the world and their own desire. And what happened to that church that used to be on fire? What happened to all the voices who sang in that wonderful choir? The church is now grown dead and cold. The choir is silent, nobody goes. They've sold out what was right for what's wrong. This heart belongs to Jesus. He saved my soul from this heart belongs to Jesus. This heart is not for sale. Not for sale. I'm not for sale. Just not for sale. No way, no sir. A man from California called a few years ago. He said, boy, with your talent, we can make a lot of dough. I said, thanks for your offer, it all sounds swell, but I belong to Jesus, Mr. I'm just not for sale, I'm not for sale, just not for sale, I'm not for sale, no way, no sir, if you're living for Jesus, friend, there'll come a day, the devil will try. Belong to Jesus, devil get me behind me. I'm not for sale, I'm not for sale, just not for sale. I'm not for sale, no way, no sir. I belong to the Lamb of God, He purchased me with precious blood. I don't need this world popularity. I'd rather have what he gave to me. I belong to the King of Kings. 
just not for sale. No way, no sir. I'm not for lease. I'm not for borrow. I belong to Jesus. 24 7. Not just on Sundays. Proud to tell you tonight. I'm not for sale. Thank you, Brother Mike. That blessed me. Thank the Lord for his goodness. This thing's got a feedback to it a little bit, Brother Jamie. There you go. Thank you. Praise the Lord. If that didn't bless you, there's something wrong with your blesser. Amen. It's one thing I like about Brother Mike. Is Brother Mike enjoys what he's doing for Jesus. Let me just say, every one of us ought to be that way. He got joy in his heart when he's singing those songs. And what amazes to me, there's no telling how many times he sung them. I know he sung them a bunch because we've had him sing them a bunch here when he comes. But every time he sings them, it's like the first time he sung them. He enjoys them that much. Thank you, Brother Mike. I love you, brother, and I appreciate you coming by. I mean, we have to put up with these children you ought to come by and visit with us every now and then and show you appreciate what we're doing amen <laughs> uh, we appreciate mike we appreciate brian bubba alias aka bubba we appreciate them being a part of our church we really do what a blessing it is to have them well <laughs> we ought to shout it out folk <laughs> we had some good songs tonight it's been sung that ought to cause us to rejoice and to be happy in the lord jesus uh, turn your Bibles, if you would, this, if you would, where we were this morning over in Psalms. We're going to be, we're going to read uh, a few verses there. Well, we may not read the verses because we're going to be reading some of them anyway uh, on the points that we get to. But uh, once again, I would remind you what we talked about this morning. We just talked about the fact that God is so good to us and how that we spoke in Psalms 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, and 95. On oh, just what God was and what God is. I'm glad what he was, he still is, amen. Because he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. And nothing's ever going to change. And God never changes his mind either, by the way. And God meant what he said and he said what, he's, what he meant. And I'm glad we have all of our, our hope and our trust and our assurance in a God such as this. I'm glad there's nobody, no God like him, as the Bible tells us. And we read about that this morning and Talked about it this morning. I talked about the fact that God takes care of us and we certainly know that he does because everyone in this building, uh, you have what you have by the hand of God. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. And boy, the perfect gift of salvation, what came our way that made a difference in our life and put a desire in our heart to serve and live for him and tell the world that we're not for sale. Not for sale. People are selling out for a lot of things, folk. There's a lot of people that have sold out to Sunday night service for football games. They sold out to Sunday night services because of just too lazy to get up and get back to the house of God on Sunday. They sold it out because they said, I got to get up and go to work early in the morning. Y'all thank God you got a job to go to. Amen. We sold him out for a lot of things. And how sad that is. But I'm glad he takes care of us. You see, I got something to shout about today because, number one, I'm saved. <laughs> if I can't shout about anything else, I can shout because I'm saved. Amen. You ought to be able to shout because you're saved because a holy and a righteous and an almighty God loves you and me. Amen. I don't understand why. I don't even understand how, but he says he does, and I believe that. Amen. Little children saying, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Thank God for the word of God that tells us and shows us just what God thinks about us, how he cares for us, and how much he loves us. I thank God today we can shout because of the promises that he has made unto us. I'm, I can shout today because I'm not going to hell. Thank God. I'm, I'm glad my redemption is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the world didn't give me what I got, and the world can't take it away. As Brother Mike said, they can't send my soul to hell. <laughs> I'm glad I'm saved forever. Yes, sir, I believe in eternal security. I believe the Bible teaches that. That's not Taylor theology. That's not Emmanuel Baptist Church theology. 
That's not even independent Baptist theology. That is biblical theology and doctrine out of the word of God that we're saved forever. And the, nothing the devil in the world and anybody or anything else can do about it. That's the reason tonight we ought to be able to shout and praise the Lord that we're not going to hell. Oh my, how sad it was just this past week. I think there were seven members of a family that was in a house fire up here at Camp Abella. And of what I understand, none of them are doing too good. Is that right, Brother Marvin? None of them are, doing, are not doing good and so on and so forth. I don't know if they were overcome by smoke or some of them suffered burns. I don't know all of that. But I think one of the horriblest things would be to do would be to die by the means of fire. I've heard of people talking about how they've come up on automobile accidents and truckers and trucks when they've had a wreck and fires would break out and bust into front flames and because the people couldn't get out, they would lose their life. And I even heard this one, uh, this one told one time, I heard this many years ago, that there was a trucker, if I'm not mistaken, it was over here at the, Her at the River Road traffic circle where it used to be the traffic circle there, a tractor trailer wreck there and the cabin was on fire and the driver in that, in that truck was begging the police officer of the state trooper that that was there on scene at the accident was begging that state trooper to take his weapon out and shoot him and take his life because he was being burned alive. Oh, that has to be terrible and horrible. <laughs> Woo, glory to God, I shout tonight because I'm never going to suffer the torment. The only fire I'll ever feel is the one that's burning in my heart. Hallelujah, bless his holy name. We got so much to shout about. And the praise the Lord for this morning. God, we all just shout it out. The Bible this morning, I said, you know, talking about not burning in hell, I'm going to use a verse that Brother Tim read this morning in our devotional uh, before Sunday school. In Psalms 86 and verse number 13, it says, For great is thy mercies toward me, O oh, hallelujah, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. The lowest hell. I'm not going to hell. Our, little, our children have sung that for us in the youth choir before. I'm not going to hell. Thank God for that. And I praise the good Lord of that. But we see we need to shout and shout it out because of the goodness of God. In the book of Psalms 91, if you'll notice there, please, I want you to notice the providence of God. The providence of God is just simply this. Providence is an event regarding as an act of God or simply put, God's care. Jesus cares for us. 1 Peter chapter 1, chapter 5, verse number 7 says, Cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. What a, what a peace and a satisfaction that we have in our heart tonight, knowing that we are in the providential care of an almighty God. Psalms 91 and verse number 11, the Bible says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Brother Mike, I think, mentioned something a while ago that the angels knows his name. You know, I don't care whether the angels know my name or not. I'm just so glad that he knows my name. I'm thankful for the day that he called my name and I heard a voice and I made a choice to accept and to follow him. And ever since I've been saved almost 49 years ago, thank God, thank God, God's always taking care of me. I feel my throat getting hoarse again. I better slow up a little bit. Woo, I helped the choir a little bit tonight. Might have stripped the gear, but I'm telling you, folk, we got something to shout about. Thank God for the care of God that's upon our lives. Psalm 40, 145 in verse number nine says, the Lord is good to all. And he is. He's good to all. He's good to all of us. Not some of the time, but all the time. Even to the sinner, he's good to you. Giving you a chance, as I said this morning, once again, to hear his glorious gospel preached. But it says the Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. Oh, thank God for the providence of God, God's care for us as he watches over and taking care of us. We see that God's providence is a preserving care that he has for us. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter five in verse number 23, the Bible says, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He may come tonight, he may come tomorrow, it might be 10 years from now, who knows it might be 100 years from now, but I don't think it's gonna be that long. But I'm glad to report to you and I'm glad to know because according to the word of God that he has promised to preserve us and take care of us until he comes again. That's the reason I said this morning, we shouldn't be so upset because what's happening in this world, because we're under the divine care of an almighty 
almighty God that's going to take care of his children, going to take care of his youngest, and he's going to make sure that we make it home safely. Amen. We're going to be constantly in his divine care, his providential care. As he, hey, the providence is an act of God. It's simply God's care for us. Then we see, not only, I'm going to try to hurry tonight, cover most of this as I can. Not only is it preserving, but thank the Lord it's providing. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 26. Now I've got these verses written down. That's the reason I read them so quickly. Maybe you don't have time to get there, but maybe you can mark them down. But we see that his divine care, his providence is providing. Matthew 6, 26, it says, Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into their barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, and ye are much better than they. Oh, thank the Lord. When you begin to think about how he takes care of creation itself, he's not going to forget about us. Let me just say this also. He's not going to serve his children on half rations either. The Bible says that you'll never see that. The Bible says I've never seen the righteous forsaken and begging bread. God's going to take care of us. As I said this morning, it shoes on our feet and food on our table and roof over our head and all the many things that he blesses us with. And he does that just because he provides for us through his providential care, just like you provide for your children, how you provide for your grandchildren. And let's just think about this for a moment. I, my children had things that I never had. They did. They had things I never had. And you know why they had them? Because I didn't have them. And if I, wanted, if I could provide them for them, I wanted, to, I wanted them to have them. But let me just say sometimes that's maybe not too good. We give them too much. I'll be honest with you. We spoil them. We give them too much. Same way go with our grandchildren. Hey, they're going to get what they ask for most of the time. And, and listen, it's a, it's a wonderful thing that we can provide for them and, and give to them. But Lord, as long as they appreciate it and they realize where it comes from, it's just the way our Heavenly Father is. I'm glad to say to you tonight that he's going to provide for us. He's going to make sure we get what we need. He's going to make sure that he supplies that need. And how many times does it seem like it's come down right to the bottom of the barrel or the end of the rope and God show up right in the nick of time? Hey, right in the nick of time when you needed him the most, that's when he showed up. He provides for us. That's his care for us. And then not only that, but we have his preserving, we have his providing care, we have his protecting care. Psalms 140, verse number seven. O God, the Lord, thy, the strength of my salvation, thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. <laughs> hey, the devil works on us, don't he? Oh yeah, he gives us a fit. He works on us every day. He, he don't take any time off. And that's the reason that we need to stay as close to the Lord as we can and stay under the shadow of his wing and know that he covers us and watches over us and that he covers our head, the Bible says, in the day of battle. Look, if you would, please, in Psalms 91 and verse number four, the Bible says, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth. He shall, shall be thy shield and buckler. I'm glad to report to you that he will protect us under and through his providential care. Oh, thank God for the protecting hand of the Lord. We say we trust our military and they say that we have the strongest military in the world. That has cut down and been dwindled a whole lot because of the people that have served in our office and that is totally wrong. We're just dropping our guard basically what we're doing. We're allowing the others to come in and attack us from the inside and, and take our liberties and take our freedoms away from us from the, uh, from the inside. And they've always said that Russia would take over America without firing a single shot. And that's what's happening to our nation. That's why our, our government is deteriorating. We owe more money to China than we got money to pay them. But yet we're still sending $400 million over there in the Islamic State and giving them money and, and supporting that stuff over there and that junk over there. And we don't have money to pay our own bills. You better not be trusting, trusting in your government to help you. I really, I'll be honest with you. Back when I was maybe in my 50s or whatever, I never thought there'd be a day that I would draw Social Security. I'll be honest with you, I thought it would be gone. I thought it would be spent out. Whoopee, I'm glad it wasn't. <laughs> oh, now, I are, now I are drawing it, amen. I thank the Lord for that. So I'm glad there was a little bit left, but I'll tell you, on down the road, it's going to probably going to run out. But let me just say, my hope is not in the government. <laughs> my protection and my providing and my preserving is not in the United States of America. And can I say this? I thank God for America. I'm an American from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. 
And I thank God for America. Well, let me just, I'm not like some preacher that said he took his American flag out of his church and don't honor the flag and all this kind of stuff. I don't agree with that. No, sir, I don't agree with it one minute. But he said he's done that because, and for, to me, that's dishonoring the flag. That's dishonoring your country. Hey, if you don't like it, leave it. Amen. Leave it. Hey, 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 somebody wants to come in and take your place. And they coming in and taking places too, by the way. I don't know how we got off on that, but don't matter. But I do know this, that God's providential care concerns us and it co covers him protecting us and taking care of us. And can I say this also? His providential care causes us to prosper. I like to prosper, amen. amen. If you'd be real honest right now, and everyone would stand up and testify to the fact, you've probably got more today than you've ever had in your Christian life. Especially if you, you got more today, I know, than you did when you were lost. We got nice, nice automobiles we drive. We got nice homes that we live in. Now, I remember when I grew up, we had a three-room house. That was it. They called it a shotgun shack. That's what it was. One, two, three rooms, and that was it. No running water unless you run to the well and got it. No inside bathrooms. Had the outhouse. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Didn't have that. You say, well, them were the good old days. Hey, I'll tell you right now, I'd rather go to the inside bathroom anytime than I had to go through the path, amen. Back then, hey, back then we had two rooms and a path. Now we got three bedrooms and a bath, amen. That's much better. We're prospered. The Lord's been good. Hey, you might as well smile and have a good time while you're here and enjoy the service and enjoy the good things of God. If we can't smile over the providential care of us and the, and the fact that God's watching over us, I don't know what's going to cause us to get happy. I don't know what's going to cause us to get excited. The enthusiasm of our churches today are gone. And you can sit around like you've been eating dill pickles, like you've raised in a crab orchard, like you feel like the whole world. But hey, I'm going to have me a good time. Hey, I'm going to heaven and I'm going to go first class, amen. I'm not going to start learning how to shout when I get to heaven. I'm going to know how to shout when I get there. Why? If we can shout on this side, just think what's going to be like on the other side. Hallelujah, Brother Roy. <laughs> you happy, Brother Roy? Praise the Lord, brother. I'm glad you are. Whoopee. God's providential care. The Bible tells us in Psalms 1, I won't take time to turn over there and read it, but the Bible tells us in Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3, if you read those verses, the Bible says that we shall prosper. God will cause us to prosper. Tonight I would say it is a profitable thing to serve the Lord. I grew up with, when I was young and teenage years and stuff, I, I, I grew up with boys and even girls that are in the grave now. Once at one time said they trusted in the Lord and they turned their back on God. Some that never trusted in the Lord, but their life ended up a wreck and a mess with drugs, alcohol, and because of that, they ended up in an early grave. I've, me and my sister both have outlived our whole family. My mama was 52 years old, I believe, when she died. 49. Daddy was 50, 57. I'm 66. She's, you figure it out. <laughs> She's older than I am. And I've got it better now than I've ever had it. As a word of praise and a word of testimony tonight, if you got it better now than you did before you were saved, would you just give a hand raised to the Lord and just wave your hands? Hey, and make the old devil mad and show him you're glad you're saved and God's taking care of you and God's blessed you. Hey, just identify yourself with God's people. <laughs> He's been good to us, folk. Oh, yeah, there's been some hard times, bad times, sadness, cry. There's been some times I've cried and shed tears. You have too because of hurt and heartache. <laughs> Whew. But bless his holy name. It's a prosperous thing to live for Jesus. Need to shout not only because of the providential care of God, and I'm not going to spend much time on this because we know about this and hear it often. But we ought to do it because of the love of God. 
Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 20. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Oh, we could say a lot tonight about the love of God and what it means to us. But when we begin to think about it, as Brother Mike sang that song a moment ago, he loved us when nobody else would. He loved us while we were still yet in our sins. Romans 5, 8 says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Ephesians 3, 19 says, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of of God. Dr. Seitler used to say trying to describe the grace of God is like trying to hug a mountain. I would say the same thing about the love of God. Trying to describe the love of God, Brother Roger, that he has for all of us would be like trying to hug a mountain. That is impossible. There's absolutely no way that we can do it. And what a blessing that we have. The Bible says in Solomon, Song of Solomon chapter 2 and verse number 4, he said, he brought me from the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. Amen. Oh, the love that's in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's described, we won't take time to turn to, to these verses. I'll give them to you. But the love of Christ is described in this matter. In, in Ephesians chapter two and verse number four, the Bible says it's a great love. The Bible tells us in Zephaniah chapter three and verse number 17 that it is an abiding love. In Isaiah chapter 49, verses 15 and 16, it tells us it is an unfailing love. Jeremiah 31 in verse number three says it's an everlasting love. And then, of course, John 3, 16, it tells us it's an unmeasurable un love. There's no way to measure the love of Christ and the love that God has for each and every one of us. Right quick, let me point out, we need to shout because of the promise of God, because of the love of God, and because of the deliverance of God, how he has delivered us. In Psalms, let me get back there right quick. Psalms 91, and I want to read verse number 14 to you. Notice what it says. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, I will set him on high, because he hath known my name, Brother Mike. He says he knows my name. I think about the deliverance of God. Colossians 1.13 says, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Thank God. Before we were saved, we were walking in darkness. And let me just say, there's fear in darkness. Let me just say, I fear the Lord tonight because of his reverence. And because that we need to reverence him, we should have the fear of God in our heart and our life. But it's not a fear that we fear when we're in dark places. Instead of that, we'll have the peace of God in our life when we rightfully reverence him and fear him in the way that we should. The Bible says in Colossians chapter four, verse one and verse number 14, it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Thank God we've been delivered. The word salvation just simply means deliverance, that we've been delivered. We've been delivered out of the grips of Satan. We've been delivered out of the, the pits of hell. We've been delivered out of the pits of sin. We've been delivered out of corruption in, in, in our lives and all the ungodliness that was in our life. Thank God we were delivered from that. And for that, we ought to be thankful. Some of you sitting here in this congregation tonight, you've done some wicked things in your life. All of us have. I know some has the testimony how that God saved them from alcohol. How that drink has ruined many, many lives. How that drink has ruined many, many homes. And how that dr the drink has lost many, many jobs for people because they were relying upon that. But then they have the testimony that one day, thank God they brought... <laughs> Woo. They were delivered out of darkness and brought into the light and now they can stand and praise the Lord and give a shout of praise and a shout of thanks because they've been delivered from that former lifestyle and Jesus Christ did it all. Amen. And all to him we owe. Luke chapter 10 verse number 20 said, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, listen to this, but whether rejoice 
because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I may not, my name might never be in lights, probably won't be, don't expect it to be. My name may not ever be in the newspaper, don't expect it to be. It'll never make the newscast. I hope it don't because of something happened to me or something I've done bad. I hope my name's never in jailbird. Say, so what in the world jailbird, preacher? Well, that's them people that's committed crimes and done crime. Now, now, let me back up just a little bit and say something about that. Some of that stuff they put in jailbird should not even be in there. Somebody got a suspended driver's license. Why put that in jailbird? My goodness. Because they failed to stop for a police officer. Well, maybe that ought to be in there. I, I don't know, but I'm just saying some of that stuff. Now, listen, I don't get that and watch the paper and see if anybody in there that I know. Now, I will say this. I have seen some in there that I did know. And they were kin to Ruby. Hey, I, 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 that's just the truth. Some of you probably see some of your kinfolk in there too. Thank God, thank God for his deliverance. Hey, he can take you out of jail and he can keep you out of hell. <laughs> Whoo, I've been delivered, amen. And then this last thought. We ought to take time just to thank the Lord and praise him and shout it out because God even thinks about us. Psalms 91, verse number 14, I think I've already read that. But the latter part of that verse, he says, I will set him on high because he hath known my name. What a blessing that is, that he hath known and still knows our name. Yeah. Psalms 115 and verse 15 says, ye are blessed of the Lord. Psalms 115 and verse number 12 says, the Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will, he will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. But oh, what a blessed thought it is to know that he has been mindful of us. The songwriter put it this way. When he was on the cross, we were on his mind. He come to this world to die. He knew what was ahead of him because he was God. And he came willingly. Laid down his life. Well, they didn't take his life. He gave his life. Amen. And that's the reason tonight that we ought to give ourselves to him. I know a lot of times we make the mistake by saying when we're getting ready to take our offering, we say we're going to take an offering. They, some Christians you almost have to take it from. You ever heard the saying, you can't get blood out of a turnip? Hey, something like that. But I'll say this, folk, right now, not bragging on myself, but bragging on God. I've never had a problem with giving to the Lord's work. I've never had a problem with giving my tithes. You say, preacher, you don't know what I have to pay. If you ain't paying your tithes, you're paying a lot. Because you're paying a lot on interest if you're not giving God what's his. Yes, sir. You don't pay your tithes, you'll buy a battery this week. You'll have a tire to blow out this week going to work. You go to work, you might get your hours cut. Hey, the Bible says we have not because we ask not. And I believe with all my heart that we are denying ourselves of all the many blessings if we'll just be obedient and do what we're supposed to do. I believe that the people of God that are saved would tithe to the church as they should. I don't believe the church would ever have a need that would not be supplied. And let me just say this. God has always supplied the need here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. God's been good to us. A little over 11 years, and if nothing happens, this building is going to be paid off this year. Hallelujah. I may have one of them conniption fits. I may do like Brother Mike. I might be bouncing around and jumping around and, and, and throwing, throw, hey, that, that, that guy's agile. I mean, I believe he could be a running back. <laughs> we went up to the camp meeting. I went up to his home church where he, where he goes up in Weaverville. Man, that place is a long ways. But I went up there to preach at, a, at their camp meeting and uh, Brother Mike was singing. And while he was singing, Brother Mike jumped off a platform bigger than this out in the yard. 
I said, good Lord, he's going to kill himself. He's going to break a leg or something. But he never missed a leg. Well, we ought to be kicking our heels up for Jesus. Oh, we can get excited when things happen. We get a raise. We get a new, new, uh, get a, get a new, uh, new uh, child in the family. Get a new grandbaby. Boy, we can be happy. And hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's, that's worth being happy and shouting and enjoying. My, my, we ought to think about the fact that Jesus thinks about us. Boy, we ought to be so thankful of that. He knows you tonight. Do you know him? Christian friend, he knows you tonight, but are you in the center of his will and doing what you can for him? When's the last time you praised him? When's the last time you thanked him? When's the last time you honored him and showed him, you showed him praise and honor in your life? Let's stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed, please. The Lord spoke to your heart tonight and you need to come. You come. The most important part of the service, as far as I'm concerned, is the invitation. Gives you an opportunity to respond to what the Lord spoke to your heart. And I believe every time we come into his house, he has something for us. And I know that song that Brother Mike sang, he's talking about in our, in our bodies, our, the house where God's taking his abode, but He's in his church house tonight because we, his people, are assembled here to worship. If you're here tonight and you need to come to the altar for any reason, would you slip out and come? Maybe you just want to thank him. Maybe you want to praise him. Maybe you got a burden. Maybe you have a need. Maybe you, you know a friend that has a problem. You, you have a loved one that's lost and on their way to hell. We're not going to linger in the invitation. I'm not going to draw it out, but God spoke to your heart. Just come. Take your burdens to the Lord. Leave them there so folk are on their way. You pray for them that are coming. Pray for these that God will do a work in their life. Anybody else need to come? You come. If Jesus should come back tonight, or if he should call you home tonight, would you be able to face him and him be satisfied? We ought to be well-pleasing unto the Lord. The Bible tells us that. If you need to come, you come. Praying for these at the altar. The Lord bless them and help them. to know that we have a Savior that we can approach. And I'm glad the Lord Jesus Christ by us accepting and trusting Him has given us access unto the Father. And when we pray, we come and we pray in the name of Jesus. The Bible says there's one mediator, mediator between God and man and that man is 
Christ Jesus. So I'm so glad and thankful tonight that we have a God that is approachable. That we can come before the throne of grace boldly. I think there's what we ought to do in our life. We need to honor authority. I think we ought to honor the authority of laws in our land. And certainly we need to honor the authority of the God of heaven we serve. Well, I appreciate you coming tonight. Appreciate you being here. Pray and hope you have a wonderful week. Pray you just trust the Lord. A lot of people say, well, tomorrow will be Blue Monday. There's no reason to be Blue Monday. Because the Lord made Mondays like he made Sundays. For us today that we can rejoice in. And I hope and pray that you'll do that. Pray for the work. Pray for the ministry. Pray for the request that's been mentioned today. In our church bulletin, there's a whole sheet of prayer requests there. All those people need our prayers. Keep them in your prayers. Those of you that will be coming uh, to the fair tomorrow evening uh, at 4 o'clock, that's when the fair opens at 4. And if you haven't been coming and, uh, and helping in the fair before, if you'll just come at 4 o'clock, uh, that will be good. You don't have to get there early because some of us that have been going, we'll, we can go in the back gate. Now, we ain't sneaking in, but we, get, we go in the back gate, and uh, we get in early, so we'll have everything set up. But all the rest of you that are coming to help, maybe for the first time or second time or whatever, uh, if you'll just be there by 4 o'clock, come straight down to the uh, commercial building. When you go in the gate, it'll be to the left all the way at the end, right past the merry-go-round. And right across from the chickens and the bulls and the hogs. So that's where we at. Amen. So we're going to have a good time. I'm looking forward to it. I always enjoy it. Meeting some people, witnessing to them, and seeing people that come by and know you and talk and fellowship a little bit. It's an enjoyable time. And we're looking forward with working with our people. So don't forget the hot dogs in the morning. And uh, get those made up and ready to go. And uh, we'll have a good time. Pray for the those that will be working and laboring there. Pray that you'll bless Brother Copeland and... Uh, Sister Copeland, is they there with us? We always enjoy them being there with us, so looking forward to that. All right, you be careful going home tonight. Hope you have a great week, and hope you come back on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Once again, we'll just center around the things of God and enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Brother Charles Owens, would you dismiss us, please?